In this video, I just wanted to share a piece of sandbox design development for a VR functionality where I can pick up an object, leave a ghost of that mesh, inspect the object, but then when I let go, it relocates to where I picked it up. Um, so you can kind of take it right across the room <laughs> and let it go. This is for my flock exhibition, where if there's a model or a sculpture, I want to be able to pick up the artwork so that you can look at it, but then relocate it when you let go. So we'll look at how I've put this together using the VR template as a starting point and the standard BP pickup actor. And I've just made a few modifications to that for this to work before I implement it in Flock. When you choose the VR project template, when you first open it, you'll come to this map, which is the startup map. But if you come to contents in the left hand and filter by level, you will see the motion controller map. That's what I've been working with. Now, when you open this for the first time, you will have lots of blue boxes here on this platform, which are all BP pickup actor uh, actors. I've actually worked into that actor. I've edited that um, just by working with the blueprint. Um, and I've just reduced it to two for purpose of my demonstration. But if we click into here, you'll see all the blueprints that drive the interaction that we've just been looking at. So I have everything related to pickup, everything related to dropping the item, and then anything that needs to happen on tick with regard to calculating positions and tweening, i.e. moving the mesh from the drop location to relocate it to the pickup location. So if we come to event pickup, now this is already set up for you and is hooked up to the motion controller pawn, which is the pawn that you are controlling in the VR template. So this is a blueprint interface, which is already set up. So we're just unpicking what was attached and this is now the new code that deals with checking to see if there's a ghost mesh on screen already. And I'll play a video now that demonstrates the issue that you have if you do not have this is valid check. So I only want to have one ghost per pickup mesh at a time. So if we do not have the invalid and I keep grabbing the model before it relocates because I'm recording the location on pickup I'm now getting multiple ghosts so the is valid looks to see if there's a ghost already there and if it is it destroys it before spawning the new one so is valid is very powerful it's good just to make sure that you've only got one of anything at any one time um, I'll do another video with some further examples of how is valid is used. What we're then doing is we're getting the transform information of self, the actor we are, and we are the BP pickup cube. I've just left the name, even though I've just changed what is normally a cube here in the mesh to the generic head mounted display from startup content, just to have a more interesting mesh to work with. With our actor in the world, it's getting my own actor transform. And the transform is made up of a few things. It's the location, the rotation, and the scale. The second part of the sequence, we have a Boolean that I have set up here is pickupable. Terrible English, but <laughs> That will work for me for now. And I have made that instance editable and exposed on spawn. That will make sense in a moment. 
If you've watched my game instance video, you'll see that I'm making a reference to the game instance using my blueprint function library, setting up a blueprint pickup cube reference in that game instance, and then writing myself to that reference. So I always know which pickup item is the current item by writing it to the game instance. So if I ever need that from anywhere else, I can, I can get that. I'm then setting another Boolean, which I've set up, which isn't exposed. It's just local to this blueprint. Should T interp. Now T interp is transform interpolation. So that's interpolating between a target and a current location, rotation and scale. So it's doing three things at once in the single interpolation node. We are then looking at the static mesh and I am setting the physics and turning them off because I'm picking them up. I don't want to sort of knock them. If I have physics on, if my hand goes towards them, I'll, I'll, I'll knock it off. And I'm then attaching the root of our actor, which is a static mesh, the head mounted display to the target, which is part of that blueprint interface, which is already set up. You're just pulling out from attach to and making that the target. This is actually part of the original code under pickup. We've just extended it here to do a few other things. So the second item from the sequence for pickup, we have another Boolean which asks, can I respawn? And if that's true, then we are spawning actor blueprint pickup cube, which is who we are. But what we've done is because we've exposed those variables, is pick up a ball? No. Can respawn? No. So the fact that this mesh and actor is pick up a ball and can respawn will only happen on the first instance of it. If I have this checked, is pick up a ball and can respawn. When I pick up the mesh and move it away from the ghost, I could, if these were checked, then pick up the ghost, which would in turn spawn another ghost <laughs> and on it goes. So I don't want that to happen. I just want there to be one. So I want it to be the same actor. So I'm always make, absolutely guaranteed that it's the same mesh that is being respawned, but I don't then want the ghost to be pick upable or respawnable. Hence, having these checkboxes that we've... So if it comes here and is false, and we happen to be a ghost, it won't do anything. It is allowed if it's the first instance of our head-mounted display in the world, which it is in this occasion. It will create the ghost. We will save the ghost locally as a um, local variable. And then here I'm actually setting the material, which the ghost material, I've modified, uh, I had it as wireframe, but I, I changed it actually. I didn't like the wireframe. So what I've done here is I have got that head mounted display there. And all I've done in that material is I've got the color set as a parameter, but actually I'm not changing it. That was just how it was set up. I put a Fresnel into the emissive color. And then I've got an opacity scalar, which is one, but then I'm multiplying that by 0 0.1. So as this opacity parameter is reduced, we're actually fading out from 0 0.1, which is currently how this is rendering and fading out to zero. I was just playing around with the values, but in this, this works. So if we come back to pick up cube blueprint, and then I am setting the collision to no collision on the ghost, so that when I let go of the mesh, the mesh moving over 
the ghost it doesn't push it out the way the, the two don't collide so the collision is off on the ghost so that the mesh that is relocating can overlap with it so event drop again all set up as a blueprint interface first things first turn the physics back on when you drop it i'm actually letting the mesh relocate immediately back to the object i had a version earlier where i dropped the object and if it dropped below a certain level it would then relocate back so actually this this might be a little redundant in this version where it relocates immediately from letting go i'll just leave that there for now but that's another option so you know i could have the object in my hand i could drop it as it hits the floor it could then relocate but i didn't want that in the end it was a bit weird um, and we're obviously detaching the object from um, which is us we are detaching ourselves from actor now should interp so you know here is pick up a ball and only on pick up a ball should it interpolate that's set to no when we're dropping we are setting should interp to true so with that in mind that will become relevant in a moment on tick because we're doing everything here on the condition that should t interp is true so that that will make sense in a moment and that's on tick but when we're dropping, yes, we do want our mesh to transform into it. But alongside that, what I'm doing is I have taken the ghost mesh. I've created a dynamic material instance of that ghost material that we have here. I've created a dynamic instance material version of that. In the timeline, I've got a float timeline just of one second going from the value of one to zero over a second. That is then driving the value of the opacity in that material. So it starts like that and it fades out when that goes to zero. So that's all the events related to the event drop. Now, I did try a few things where I was using the finished to then try and delete that version of the ghost but i actually had some weird behavior happening so um this seemed to work um relying on tick and actually having a condition here where i was looking at the actor location um, and comparing that to the original pickup purely on the location aspect not the full transform um, and I used the uh, equal vector node where you just um, literally press double equals, equals vector. You plug in two vectors, but then you have a tolerance here. Um, it's a bit arbitrary when I had it as a low tolerance. It wasn't working quite so well, but now I've set it to that. This was just a bit of trial and error than, rather than anything uh, scientific. I'm not quite sure how that works exactly, but with a little bit of iterating on the design, that has fixed the issue uh, in close proximity to the mesh. So that worked for me. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So on event tick, First thing is just to promote the delta seconds as a local variable so I can just use it as a separate node rather than having lots of wires everywhere. So the should in the should t interp as mentioned should transform interpolate on tick. So when it is true, basically when we've dropped the mesh, then set simulate physics to off so that the mesh doesn't drop to the floor it's now floating in the air but we are setting the actor transform of ourself bp pickup cube and we are getting our current transform location scale rotation 
and we are going back to our target which was our pickup information which was one of the first things that we wrote here we wrote that we recorded where we were and now that is our target not sure what happened with the naming there ignore that um, and we need to put in a delta time there delta time is basically the time it's taken from when that first instruction has been recorded and the interp speed is a multiplier so again you know we can sort of play around with this value if you want it to snap back quicker then you can make that much shorter so you can have to sort of play around with that or you can make that dependent on the distance you are away from the ghost potentially but i've just set it to that for the purpose of demonstration and that because it's on tick will move the actor from the drop location to the pickup location over and very smoothly it has its own easing in not necessarily easing out so that's where you get that lovely smooth motion of the mesh going back into position that's all handled for you um and as mentioned i want to then destroy the ghost so i don't have multiple ghosts even if they're invisible because i've set the opacity to nothing so we need to do a bit of cleaning up as we're going so that's what this does here um, i'm basically saying if the current location again on tick this is being measured on tick if it is in close proximity based on that tolerance to the pickup location if that is then true just wait a second and a half i'm just giving myself a bit of time and then destroy the actor okay so that is it for that um have fun give it a go i'm gonna develop it a little bit further um but that's kind of got it 80 90 percent of the way there so hopefully that's of use. Um, if these videos are giving you some value, then please do like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So thank you for your support. Live long and prosper.